Okay, so this lecture in the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about um, learning or function approximation using um, a different class of functions called neural networks. And specifically, we will be talking about what are called artificial neural networks or ANNs for short, as opposed to biological neural networks in the brain, right? And uh, sometimes, uh, especially these days, uh, it's uh, conventional or fashionable to call uh, such techniques deep learning, uh, which uh, is, is actually a modern, I would say, rebranding of uh, the classical field of neural networks, which goes back about 70 years now um, with, with sort of more computation and more uh, uh, complex uh, networks, I guess. Okay, so... Uh, what are neural networks? They're, of course, uh, based very superficially on how the nervous system of humans and other animals work, very superficially, right? Um, I'm sure you've all heard about these uh, because they're in the news a lot. Um, and, okay, so let's talk briefly about uh, the nervous system of, say, animals. Um, okay. Here's a single biological neuron, okay? It kind of looks like this. At least the cartoon version in your biology textbooks look like this. Uh, a neuron is a single cell, right? So you all know, know about cells. Uh, and so a neuron is a single cell. And it's sort of a long single cell, uh, or at least many neurons are long cells. Um, there is this sort of... Uh, cell body. The whole thing is a cell, of course, but this part is called the cell body. And there's a nucleus, which is in the cell body, and uh, the membrane separating the cell with the rest of the environment, which is called the extracellular space, uh, is called the cell membrane. It's a membrane. Um, and uh, the cell is, uh, has this long protuberance, um, this cable-like structure, which is called the axon. Uh, which literally is like an electrical cable that communicates information over long distances, except in this case, it is electrochemical, as we will see in a minute, okay? So this is the cable, the thing that uh, connects different parts of the body. Um, and uh, the cell body has these little protuberances that are called dendrites or dendritic branches. The word dendrite already, I think, means branched structure. Um, anyway, there are that. Um, and then on this end of the axon, there are more branch structures uh, which end in what are called synapses or synaptic terminals, okay? Uh, these essentially connect to other neurons. So imagine there is another neuron with a cell body here, just like this, and these things connect this neuron to the next neuron and so on. Uh, sometimes for some kinds of neurons, these synaptic ter terminals end in muscles and these um, make our muscles contract. Uh, but most neurons um, will connect to other neurons, I guess, at least in the human body. Um, okay. Uh, and these connections are electrical or chemical. There are different kinds of synapses. Um, yeah, so that's basically a, a single neuron. Um, and like I said, it's a single cell. Um, it can be really small, the length of it, uh, millimeters, less than a millimeter micron size uh, neurons. But it can also have many meters long neurons, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the longest uh, neuron is, but, but you can certainly imagine neurons connecting uh, the spinal cord to, your, to the bottom of your feet. Uh, and those are over a meter long, right? Um, so it's a single cell that's really that long, a meter. You can imagine long, larger animals having longer neurons. Okay, so that's a single cell. How do they work? Um, again, this is just a very high level overview. Um, this is the usual direction of signal transmission, although this is not exactly always the case, uh, but this is the usual, at least conventional direction of signal transmission. Uh, signals are electrochemical. We can do a whole lecture on uh, how the signals are generated and transmitted, 
but but essentially there is an ionic imbalance between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell and um, um, that ionic imbalance is, is somehow um, actuated uh, uh, in a manner that a, a traveling wave is set up uh, in this cable to transmit information okay so signals are electrochemical in other words uh, it's chemical in that these are um, sort of ions, um, sodium and potassium ions, uh, and it's electrochemical because uh, the, elec the, the voltage potential uh, between the membrane, uh, across the membrane, is important, okay? Um, like I said, the signals are transmitted by a traveling wave in the membrane potential. So what does that mean? Um, so if you take the axon, this is the axon, this is the axon, and you stick an electrode inside and outside, and actually measure the voltage across the membrane, that voltage is non-zero. When the neuron is doing nothing, the voltage is non-zero, it's about minus 70 millivolts. Um, this is actually true for all cells in your body. Um, but neurons have a, a special property that when they get excited, um, this membrane potential gets disturbed and uh, a traveling wave gets set up. And this traveling wave is called an action potential. This is uh, essentially at any point uh, on the axon, uh, when you excite the axon in a particular manner, and you can excite it by applying, like in injecting more ions into the axon or something like that, um, what happens is um, the voltage increases rapidly and then decreases, and then decreases a bit below, and then goes back to normal. Um, that's the voltage at a single point on an axon, and then the traveling wave along the axon looks like this. So at a single point, there's this voltage uh, fluctuation, um, and then that voltage fluctuation travels along the axon, going from, let's say, the cell body to the, uh, uh, to the synaptic terminals, okay? Um, and you, can, you, you might have heard about wave equation if you're a mechanical engineer that uh, talk about the transmission of sound. Um, you can describe the waves that gets propagated through neurons through a, a kind of a wave equation, the nonlinear wave equation, uh, which is now called the Hodgkin-Huxley equation, uh, worked out in the 1950s and won them the Nobel Prize in 1963, uh, which is a remarkable series of uh, papers that involve sophisticated mathematics and pretty intricate biological experiments to come up with the governing equations for an axon, okay? So if you want to model a neuron in great detail, you want to build these partial differential equation models. Uh, but of course, uh, if you're a computer scientist or want to use um, neural networks for computing purposes, people don't usually use the PDE model. People use a much simpler cartoon model of uh, a neuron, okay? So you have a neuron like this, let's say. Um, what happens, let's say, in the brain uh, of, of a, say, something like a mammal? Um, a single neuron, this is the cell body, this is the axon, this is, these are the synaptic terminals. Uh, many other neurons, usually, sometimes uh, a thousand neurons, uh, synapse onto the cell body. Of, uh, of a neuron, okay? Um, so lots of neurons synapse onto a neuron, and then this one will be one of many neurons will, which will snap to some other neuron and so on. So that's how uh, these neurons uh, form a uh, network, and, 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 and a network of neurons like this would be called a neural network, but now a biological neural network. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this action potential and how it's um, generated uh, very, very crudely. Action ge potential generation is on off. Uh, what does that mean? Um, or at least that was the initial understanding of how neurons transmit signals. Um, so imagine for a moment that there are action potentials coming down all these guys uh, and all these signals are somehow impinging on uh, this neuron, uh, neuron's sort of cell body in some sense. Um, 
if all these action potentials, when summed together in some potentially nonlinear manner, um, exceed a certain threshold, uh, then this neuron will generate an action potential and send a signal forward, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, when this action potential produ gets produced depends on uh, the sort of voltage difference, transmembrane voltage potential, and one way to make an action potential uh, sort of fire is raising the uh, voltage uh, between the transmembrane potential. And basically, because an action potential itself is a voltage uh, fluctuation, having multiple action potentials hit you uh, allows you to cross a threshold and uh, transmit another action potential in this neuron, okay? So from that perspective, it is on off. Um, I say here, if the many inputs to a neuron sum together somehow, and if the sum exceeds the sum threshold, um, we have an action potential generated and propagated. Um, an action potential is also called sometimes a neural impulse. It's also called a spike. Lots of names for it. They're all informal in various ways. Uh, this kind of on-off or binary behavior in neurons um, is, is specific to what are called spiking neurons, um, neurons that do produce these traveling wave action potentials. Um, there are also, it turns out, other kinds of neurons called non-spiking neurons, um, and they are more analog where uh, these input sum together and the output is sort of more uh, continuously modulated uh, as a function of the inputs, whereas in these uh, spiking neurons, it's discontinuous almost, where if it's below a threshold, nothing happens. If it's above a threshold, something dramatic happens and a signal gets transmitted, okay? Um, people use words like fire and neuron fires and neuron spikes, and all those words just mean that a neuron responds via an action potential. In other words, some kind of a threshold gets crossed, okay? Um, the connection between neurons, um, these connections or things here connecting to another neuron are uh, called synapses. And again, very broadly, uh, there are two types of synapses, excitatory and inhibitory. Uh, excitatory connections will make the postsynaptic neurons more likely to spike. In other words, if this thing is an excitatory synapse, and there's an action potential coming through uh, this neuron. Um, this neuron firing, if it's if this synapse is excitatory, uh, will make this neuron more likely to fire. And if um, if it's inhibitory, it's kind of like a negative sign on the signal. Uh, it'll make this uh, neuron less likely to fire. Okay. So it's not just a pure sum. There, it can be positives and negatives, uh, canceling each other and so on as well. Um, so that's all the biological neuroscience we are going to do to motivate, at least for now, to motivate new, uh, artificial neural networks. Um, I, I put a star here, and when I said very crudely, all of these are incredibly crude uh, descriptions of the incredible complexity um, that uh, is uh, part of the human brain and the nervous system and so on. And surely it misses a lot of details. Even the Hodgkin-Huxley model was just a beginning in describing uh, the complex dynamics of neurons. Uh, and uh, I would say people are still discovering lots of interesting properties of biological neurons, which may be relevant to how uh, people learn. Um, so having said that, even this level of complexity, most people do not use in describing, uh, in, in sort of trying to use them in the context of artificial neural networks. So that's what we'll do next. We will make a much, much simpler description of even this relatively simple description of a neuron and then proceed from there to build the computational tools out of them.